Good day students, welcome to today's lesson. In this lesson, we are going to talk about system analysis and design. I am sure that most of you are probably asking yourself, is this not the name of the module? Yes, it is the name of the module. However, remember what I have told you in the first lesson that it's always very important for you to understand first, why am I doing this module? What is the purpose of me having system analysis and design and how does it contribute to the future career that I'll be taking? All right, how does it contribute to my future career and so on. So by doing that, we will be breaking down the terms within the name of the modules. I would like you to understand what the system is, what is analysis, and after understand what system analysis and design is all about. Okay, now having said that, I'm assuming by now everyone has tried to log in their TCE learning and have already read this content right here for you to understand what this unit is all about. Okay, or what is this module is all about. Like it states here, it says that this unit describes the processes involved in the analysis, design, and implementation of new or upgraded computer system. In other words, in system analysis, you will be learning about different types of methodologies, fundamentals, skill sets that you can possibly use and that can help you to develop a successful information system. All right, it can either be for a new system or it can either be for an upgraded or either you upgrading uh, an existing system okay now let's go back to our slides as we said we first going to understand the terms let's try to understand what a system is now a system here it states that a system is an orderly grouping of interdependent components linked together according to a plan to achieve a specific goal now in other words you can say that a system is a collection of interrelated components okay that works together in order to achieve a specific goals what is interdependent or what is interrelated when we talk about these two terms we're basically referring to uh, components that are related to one another right they are related to one another. When they are together, they work together, all right? So they are interdependent to one another, okay? All right, so I have an example for you here. I'm sure most of you have heard about a respiratory system. Now, a respiratory system uh, has different organs, all right, and other parts of your body involved, all right, in order to help you to breathe. So these different parts or organs, I'm sure you know about your nose, you know about your lungs, you know about a trunchy, especially for those that did biology, and we also have trunchy, if I'm not mistaken, and many other parts, I believe. So all these parts here, or organs, they work together, they are all interrelated, all right? They work together in order to make sure that you do what? You are breathing, all right? You're exchanging that oxygen and carbon dioxide. Now, remember if you have problem probably with your lungs, okay? There, there might be very high possibilities that you might be not breathing well or any other illness that might okay. Do you understand? All right. So, it's the same applies to the definition of what we just said, a system. Okay? Or when you have, let's talk about a computer system that you might have. Let me say a computer in other words, you know that your computer is made up of a keyboard, a mouse, a monitor, a system box. These are all different components. But if I remove a system box, there is no way that you're going to be able to type or to do whatever that you wish to be doing. Okay, because one component is missing. All right. But if there's no screen as well, which is your monitor, there's no way that you'll be able to view things that you want to display. Okay, so that's basically just... Uh, a little summary on what a system is and we also have analysis what is analysis so analysis is very simple so to analyze is just a process of you breaking down something into parts 
all right so it's just a process of you breaking down something into parts and uh and to learn and to learn or to study about those particular parts that you have broken down and how they relate to one another all right it's just like okay uh you're an analyst you analyze systems and for you to analyze systems obviously you need to analyze each part okay how does this part work and how does this part relate to to the other part and so on all right or how will we develop a system what do we need in order for us to develop a system and so on and then we have system analysis now now system analysis and design is just mainly a broad term that is used for describing methodologies for developing high quality information systems which combines IT people data to support business requirements and the purpose of system analysis is just mainly to study system or its parts in order to identify objectives okay or in other words you can just say that for me I basically I basically like referring system analysis as a problem solving method because it's just mainly a process of collecting and interpreting facts and identifying the problems and so on and then we have another question why is systems analysis important to a business okay number one it says that is to reduce the occurrence of errors in the system to make improvements or modifications or to implement test alternatives and another reason is that you know with system analysis uh, having to be part of businesses it mainly solve all right it solves a lot of problems and it also improves systems and ensure that all the components of the systems are working efficiently towards accomplishing their purposes so that's why it's very much important that system analysis should always be part of a business you want to develop a system make sure that that system is analyzed all right you want to run a project all right that has to do with developing anything make sure that you have system a system analyst that will help you to do the first part okay to find out if the system will be feasible or not feasible that actually cut costs okay it actually cut a lot of costs okay and then we have the people that are involved in information systems now these people are mainly divided into two parts the color that you see in purple right here uh, these people are called uh, creator of information systems these are people that create it okay these are the system analyst programmer and computer engineer and then the ones with the white uh, color right here with the white text color these ones are called or they mainly focuses on operation and administration okay that's mainly their purpose like the computer operator database administrator help desk trainers and cio are we together so all these people that are basically just named here they play quite a very huge role in designing developing and building information system and making sure that they are run smoothly okay now let's try to understand what the system analyst is a system analyst is mainly an individual that ana that analyzes uh, projects, all right? Uh, that can be, and this person does not only work by herself. She can basically work with a team of people or with a department based on the requirements that are needed to be accomplished, all right? Uh, they identify as well specific details of a system that needs to be built or as well of a system that needs to be upgraded. So a system analyst, just like I said, is generally not the person who does the actual development of the system. No, she works with the team. And once she's done with analyzing the system, she will definitely have to bring in developers that will need to develop that particular system. Her role is just mainly to analyze, okay? Identify specific details of a system that needs to be built and that's it. And to find out as well if the project that is about to be run will be feasible or not feasible. And then we have a programmer. I believe we all know what a programmer is. Now, a programmer is mainly a coder. Okay, so this is a person that codes in different programming languages. Okay, I believe we all know different programming languages. We have Java, we have Python, we have C, we have C++. We have so many other programming languages. All right, so in this case uh, of systems development, programmers generally attempt to fulfill the design specification given to them by a system analyst. So once the system analyst is done with analyzing a system and knows exactly how the system needs to operate or function, 
then the system analyst needs to give the specifications to the programmer and the programmer needs to code based on the specifications that they were given by the system analyst then we have a computer engineer now a computer engineer these are basically engineers uh, these are basically engineers that design computing devices that are used every single day so we have different types of uh, computer engineers the first one is a hardware engineer so a hardware engineer this is mainly the person that designs the hardware components like the ones that design a computer the one that design a microprocessor which is maybe a cpu the one that design motherboard and many other hardware uh, devices that needs to be designed and then we have a software engineer now a software engineer these are the people that mainly create programming languages and operating system all right they design all these new kind of softwares to run on the hardware that were developed by the hardware engineers for example we have java java it is a programming language but it was designed or it was created by someone and that person is a software engineer and then you find a programmer that make use of java in order for them to create the what a system and so on all right can you guys see the difference now between a software engineer programmers and hardware engineers then we have systems engineer now system engineers these are just engineers that basically takes different components that were designed by other engineers to make sure that they are all working together okay so for them it's just a matter of you know uh, bring different hardware and software together uh, softwares and integrate them to create new functionalities are we together then we have a network engineer so a network engineer's job is just mainly to understand the networking requirement of an organization and then they design a communication system that will meet all the needs using network hardware and software uh, and softwares that are available okay and then we have a um, computer operator now a computer operator actually falls under administration and operations so their main purpose is just mainly to make sure that systems are running smoothly systems are up to date and ensuring that you know everything is running smoothly within the organization all right they are operator uh they are operator individuals okay so they keep okay like they say here uh, a computer operator is a person who keeps the large computers running making sure that this computer is running if there's any problem they quickly pick it up and make sure that they come up with the solution to solve it immediately all right if there's not enough memory within the computer they make sure that they immediately come up with the solution either to upgrade the memory or either to come up whatever solution that they can possibly come up with okay and then we have a database administrator i don't know if you guys have already started with database but with database administrator this is just a person who mainly design or create databases that are used as part of the application or as part of the data warehouse all right so a database administrator consults the system analyst and the programmer on projects that requires access to or creation of databases okay are we guys together do we understand exactly what a, a database administrator is do we all understand all right so a database is just uh how do we call it it's just a collection of structured information or data typically stored electronically in a computer system all right and obviously it's controlled by a database management system and we have different types of databases like SQL, MySQL, and many others, okay? And then we have a help desk or support analyst. So the help desk, uh, these are basically personals, all right, uh, that you find, all right? This, okay, let me put it in this way. Okay, the help desk, this is the first line of support for computer users in the company. If there's any problem that any employee is experiencing, maybe with the system or anything that they could possibly be experiencing, they have to call the help desk of the support analyst. And these people have to make sure that they have to solve or they have to give immediate assistance to these people. 
all right as i say computer users who you who are having problems or need information can be helped by the help desk for assistance all right now remember the help desk or the support analyst might not have the answer to all the questions or might not have the answers to all the problems that are experienced by the users all right uh, or by let me say for example by the employees of the organization so for the ones that they know they make sure that they assist immediately and for the ones that they do not know they make sure that they need to follow up and come back and help them as well immediately okay and then we have a trainer a trainer is very simple a trainer is basically an individual that makes sure that gives training to people on specific computer skills and one of the good example is that if there is a new system that is developed for example in traveling college we need to call in a, a trainer that will train all the traveling college employees on how to make use of that system just as easy as that okay uh, here they say they give another example like for example if a new ERP system is being installed in an organization one part of the implementation process is to teach all of the users how to use the new system simple as that so the trainer needs to understand what the system is all about how to use that system so that he or she will be able to make sure that he trains the users okay and then lastly we have the cio for me i feel like if you are a cio you can afford a range rover maybe two months or three months based on your salary and what company you are working for. So CIA, CIO stands for Chief Information Officer. So this is mainly the head of the IT department. In other words, they call him or her the face of the IT department within the organization. And you know, this person uh, works with senior leaders in all parts of the organization to ensure that good communication and planning is running smoothly. All right, so this person mainly does the budgeting, uh, does strategic planning, and also makes the decision that has to do with information systems or their functionalities. So having said that, we have come to the end of the lesson. So make sure that you fill in the e-register. And also, if you have any question, please make sure or do not hesitate to ask your question in the chat. And lastly, make sure that you take your quiz. Okay, once you take your quiz, submit it and wait for your marks. So having said that, have a beautiful day. Blessed day indeed. Thank you.